things over there. And there you go. That's how your oil pressure sender works. Well, that ain't good. What's up, Buck Dougal Didi in the garage. So your ride is showing zero oil pressure. Terrifying, catastrophic, I know. But here's what I want you to do. I want you to take a deep breath. I want you to calm down. We're gonna work through it today. We're gonna talk about oil pressure, oil pressure sensors, oil pressure senders, and how to figure out what's going on when that gauge drops to zero. The first thing I need you to do, calm down, turn the car off, get out, pop the hood, check the oil. If your car has an oil leak or something you maybe didn't know about, you might have drained all your oil out and the reason you don't have oil pressure is because you don't have any oil. Now the next thing to remember is that if your engine is actually running sans oil, you're gonna know about it. The sensor or the, the gauge dropping to zero is not gonna be your first alert. It's gonna be a binging and a banging and a clanging and protesting nonstop. So rest assured that if your gauge drops to zero but you have oil in the engine, and everything else seems normal, there's a very good chance you've got a faulty one of these guys. This is an oil pressure sensor or an oil pressure sender. It's a um, interchangeable term. So if you suspect that you have a problem with your oil pressure sending system, uh, you have to first identify where your oil pressure sender is. Now, if you're working on an old four liter, whether it's in a Wrangler or an XJ or a WJ or a ZJ, it's gonna be bing, right on the side there, uh, right around where the oil filter is. What I'm looking at here is a 4.7 liter V8. They put them in Dodge, Chryslers, and Jeeps from about 99 to about 2008. And they are notorious for having faulty, <laughs> Chrysler electronics, right? For having faulty oil pressure senders. So if you have one of these 4.7s and you're looking for it, you gotta go right about here. Alrighty friends, I'm only gonna continue this video if you promise to ignore my power steering wheel. Don't judge me, I'll fix that next week, all right? We're looking at the front of the engine. We're over on the driver's side. We have our oil filter right here, right above it. You see that sensor? That is your oil pressure sending unit or your oil pressure sensor on the Jeep Chrysler Dodge 4.7 liter. Now, how do you get that bad boy out of there? Do you have to pull the oil filter? Absolutely not. I don't know why there's a debate about this online because it's super easy to confirm. Go outside and pull it without removing the oil filter. Uh, what you are gonna need is a kind of specific socket. And that socket is gonna be an extra deep without a bunch of extra metal down the throat hole there. Uh, inch and 16th. I got this Carlisle unit at Napa a few years ago. Remove the connector. If you're working on a Dodge, it's gonna have one of those little red tabs. Slip this guy over and just work her out. There she blows. That is the oil pressure sending unit on a Jeep uh, Grand Cherokee with the 4.7 and also the later model 4 liters. That other one I showed you was from the early model 4 liters. This is from the later model, I think uh, 98 and up. Don't quote me on that. All right, friends, so you have the sensor out of the truck, out of the engine. Now what are you going to do with it? Well, you can just throw a new one in because nine times out of 10, that's going to fix your problem. But there are other components in your oil pressure sending system. There's wiring, there's gauges, there's connections. Any of those could potentially be bad, so why not test the gauge? And for that, you're gonna need a multimeter, set it to ohms. Now, these newer style Jeep uh, OP senders have three prongs. One is for a five volt reference. So what you wanna do is orient it with the plug facing up, and you're gonna deal with the, um, the right two plugs. So if you're looking at the top of the connector bit, which I just broke off, you're looking at the middle post, which is your common ground, uh, and then your far right post. And just take a reading between those two. These oil pressure sending units are normally open, so there should be uh, infinite resistance like there is right now. Middle prong and outside prong, and we are seeing a reading, which means Something wrong with this oil pressure sending unit. How do I know? Well, here's a known good unit I just pulled out of one of my four liters. Same sensor, same part number. Here's what they're supposed to look like when you test them. Middle prong, far right. Nothing. 
not a Ting Mon. Here's one of those old style sensors. This is a two wire sensor. This is pretty conventional. They also have one wire sensors. If you have a single wire sensor, it grounds through the body. So if you have a two wire, this is how we're gonna go ahead and test it. One on one lead, one on the other. No reading. If you had a single prong, you would do it one on one and one on the body and you'd still see nothing. So I've got a little bench test here that I can actually show you with this old style how these pressure sensors work. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna put some leads down on here so that we can probe this from one side. Then we're gonna link these up to our multimeter. Doesn't really matter which side goes where. And we'll make sure that we still have no reading, which we do. Then we're gonna try hitting her with a little air, adding a little pressure to the system. I got this hose. We're gonna put it right over the front of that orifice, watch our readings over there. And there you go. That's how your oil pressure sender works. When it senses pressure, it changes the reading, closes that switch, and sends it up to your gauge. Now they do make normally closed switches. Uh, and what you can do is you can Google, jump on a forum to try to figure out for you. But I'm telling you right now, these Jeep ones are normally open. So if you are able to take a reading, you have a problem, go replace your switch. What if you don't get a reading? What if your oil pressure sending unit checks out? What if you even replace your oil pressure sending unit and it still doesn't fix your oil pressure issue? Just drive that one into the ocean and buy a new car at that point, I'm just kidding. Uh, what you wanna do at that point is uh, start chasing down continuity. Make sure that you actually have continuity between that sensor and your gauge. Uh, maybe check your gauge if you can. Maybe confirm oil pressure with a mechanical oil pressure gauge. They make mechanical gauges. You screw it in the same place you'd screw in one of these bad boys, but it you physically has oil in the line and it pushes on a diaphragm in the gauge, that's a really good way to confirm, do I have oil pressure or is it something in my sending system? So that's pretty much all I got for you guys today. It's really not too difficult to diagnose issues with your oil pressure sending system. First and foremost, turn the car off, make sure you have oil, Give her an old listen. If it doesn't sound like you got a bunch of marbles doing battle with a bunch of bottle caps, you probably have oil pressure and it's something in that sending system. Download some schematic. One thing I can tell you is that oil pressure sending issues are common on a lot of vehicles. So if you have an issue that you can't quite track down, find a forum. Say you drive a 1992 Maxima and you have oil pressure issues, find a forum for other people that have 92 Maximas or whatever it is. Jeep Grand Cherokee. Find that form, ask them, hey, where do the issues in these oil pressure sending systems lie? On Jeeps, it's the senders. I know on some vehicles it's the gauge. Maybe there's a particular piece in the wiring harness that wears through or something, I don't know. Uh, the point is, get in there, do a little bit of research, and I'll bet you can find it. Like I said, you can leave me a comment down there in the squawk boxes, I'd be more than happy to help you. Just let me know, if you had issues on your Jeep four liter or 4.7 with oil pressure senders, this is the third one I'm putting in that 4.7. Now granted, I get mine out of the junkyard, so probably has something to do with it. But still, point is, uh, they don't last a good long time. I actually keep one in my glove box, so I can just do it real quick. Slide her out, slide her back in, no big deal. All right, as always, thanks for watching. See you next time. I almost forgot the most important part. Junkyard sensor for the win. There she goes. I told y'all it was just a sender. This Jeep's fine. She's got... 280, 300,000 miles left in her.